idea if the mic was on when this video started because I was coughing. So if the mic was unmuted, I apologize because I was coughing. Um, so it's been a while since I've done a devotional. But like I said, uh, I, I set things up in a way. I like I said, I think I did a video. Yeah, I did a video and I said I, I, I redid a lot of the wiring, redid a lot of the things, moved things around here at the church, which puts me more more accessibly, accessibly closer to here to the podcast room which then is going to make it a lot easier to do podcasts and devotionals or anything else. Um, so uh, I don't have a specific, I, I am going to read a verse, but I'm not going to talk about the verse. Um, there's a lot of things, man, that's been going on because I haven't done a podcast and I'm just going to, I don't even have a list. I don't have anything here with me, but I just want to touch a few topics of things. And uh, I guess we'll just set it off like that and start it off like that. So um, also, make sure you go to the David Rocha YouTube channel. On there, I do other things. I, I just different things that I do. But one of the things I just did is I reviewed the boxing fight of my friend Cholo Trucker, and um, uh, and my new friend Buzz out of Stockton. And um, so they they did a boxing match, and uh, I talked about it, and I talk about my why I'm even reviewing it or whatnot, but uh, it's a good friend of mine, and, and uh, they had a fighting boxing match this last weekend, and I did a review on it. Anyways, um, here we are. It is uh, Tuesday night for us, Wednesday morning for you guys. You guys know what that means. It means there's Bible study tonight. At 6.30, we open the doors for prayer, and then at 7, we have worship and Bible study. Right now, we are studying... Uh, the Rise and Fall of Kings. Uh, I think we're going to be in part three starting tonight. And uh, if that's something that interests you, check out part one and two on this channel. Go back and watch it. Uh, trust me, it'll be a lot better if you haven't seen them. That way you come in tonight and understanding what context and where we're at and what we're doing. Um, the verse I want to read, though, right now I have my Amplified Bible. I usually read out of the ESV, but I have my Amplified Bible. And I'm reading out of 2 Timothy chapter 4. And it says this. Uh, let's see, where do I want to start? Chapter 4, verse 3. It says, For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. Basically, the Apostle Paul is warning Timothy, his student, his, uh, his, his disciple, somebody he was pointing into, Somebody that, um, this is Paul's last letter, and he's telling Timothy and letting and warning him that people are going to want to raise themselves up leaders that teach the things they want to hear, not the things what the Word says. And this is, if this is not relevant today, I don't know what is, guys. Um, there's been so many things going on in the world, so many things going on in the world of ministry that's really, truly blurring the lines of just ministry and the gospel and what the Bible says, you know, and I just, I just don't understand it. You know, I don't get it. And it just, like, let me start off with this one. The first one was a few weeks ago, there was a, I'm not sure where it was. It doesn't even matter. Um, but there was a men's conference and many of you already heard this stuff, but you haven't heard uh, me really talk about it. I'm going to just talk about a few instances. This was a church where it's a men's conference, and um, apparently it's, they go all out. It's a, it's a mega church, and, um, and basically they started off the men's conference with a guy on a pole that was dancing and did this sword swallowing thing. I guess he did things in the Olympics or I don't know, whatever. 
Um, I mean, obviously, it's a very hard talent that he does. Uh, I guess he could get props for what he does, but maybe the church wasn't the right place. But anyways, it, he was hired to do it, so I don't even blame the guy. The guy's going to go where he's hired to go. But nevertheless, it's basically a stripper pole. The guy, you know, takes his shirt off. This is a men's conference. He takes his shirt off and swallows a sword and goes on the pole like a stripper. And basically, um, Pastor Mark Driscoll was going to be one of the guest speakers. And um, he, to make a long story short, he rebuked. Um, the spirit of Jezebel, he said, and that um, that w- that it was wrong. You know, I'm not going to rehash the whole thing. You could there's so much footage on it. And here's the issue, though: is the pastor of that church got really angry. He went up there, basically kicked Mark Driscoll off the stage, and this started this whole drama because then that pastor, uh, his name's Lindell. Pastor Lindell, I forgot his first name. He, um, so this was on a, a whole conference. And then on his Wednesday, I guess, midweek service, which was a few days later, he wasted his entire sermon rebuking Mark Driscoll. And he basically tried laying out bullet points of why Mark Driscoll was wrong for calling it out that he was out of line, that according to Matthew 18, if he had a problem with his brother, he should have went to his brother first. And if his brother doesn't listen, bring two more brothers. If they don't listen, then you bring it to the church and whatever. This had nothing to do with Matthew 18. But nevertheless, this is what this pastor said. And he basically had some strong words and, and said that Mark Driscoll needs to repent. Mark Driscoll needs to publicly apologize. And if he doesn't, that every Christian out there should have nothing to do with Mark Driscoll. And then he said, for those of you out there that shared that video of the sword sword swallower, he rebuked everyone on social media, every person that shared it. And he says, you also need to repent. You also need to publicly apologize. And come to find out, um, a lot of the stuff he said was lies. Uh, and, and first of all, um, I w- if I was going to rebuke somebody for doing that, clearly unbiblical, um, who, how, <laughs> how are you going to say that I need to apologize or anybody needs to apologize for what is not biblical? Like, that's insane. Like, is this what this world is coming to? Because it's crazy because people in his congregation were actually cheering him on and, and, and clapping that he was rebuking Mark Driscoll. Now, Mark Driscoll, he's somebody I, I have followed for over the years. He's had some issues. He's had some stuff. But to be honest with you, man, I'll make a long story short, he started a mega church in, I believe, in, uh, was it Oregon? I, I, or Washington, somewhere up there. In the, in the northwest and uh, he um, he was he, he <laughs> see I don't have an issue he's straight up he's straight up he preaches straight up he doesn't hold stuff back and um, apparently people in the church where he started got their feelings hurt and basically pushed him out of his own church that he started and the moment he left the whole church crumbled what does that tell you now, a lot of people have said, well, Mark Driscoll shouldn't be like that. He shouldn't be rough. This and Now, here's the thing, right, is that he was probably around a lot of very, how do I word it, feminized men, not alpha males, males that can't handle being rebuked by men. You know, see, I, I grew up in a ranch. I grew up in the gangs. I went to prison. So you got to be that way. You better speak your mind. You don't let nobody walk over you. You don't become nobody's walking mat. 
When somebody does something, you should be able to correct them. They should be able to receive it if it's biblical, if it's sound, if it's if it's what the Word of God says. Apparently, the people in the city in the Northwest couldn't handle it. I'm not saying everybody there. I got friends in that area, but, you know, I also know that a lot of the people in that area are very soft. Not everybody, but a lot. I mean, I'm not talking, it's different than here in the Valley of California or Texas or Arizona or some of these other states. It's just different. But anyways, that's one issue. And then, and then what else happened? Um, so that went on and that was crazy. Uh, I still don't understand that. Don't really comprehend what happened there, why he, he, why he supposedly he was rebuked. But nevertheless, it goes back to this where it says that many teachers will rise to satisfy the, their own desires. People will raise up their own teachers and to support the errors that they hold. Um, I'm trying to think of what else just recently happened. Oh, yeah. And then you got Kirk Franklin, who is a gospel. Supposedly, he's a gospel producer, singer, or whatever. And they got him. He's a he's a pretty, I guess, if you can say a major Christian artist, I guess. And uh, I guess they have this latest video. He did a concert in Jamaica. And the dude, man, is 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 dancing so worldly. And here's the thing, right, is because I've seen a lot of his stuff recently over the past few years. I I wrote him off years ago, man. Here's here's the thing, right? Let me get this straight. I'm not saying I go around judging people and writing people off because we're all we all are in our own salvation. We're all doing our own walk. But the moment you have a platform, the moment you have a platform and you start misleading people, then anybody that is serving God wholeheartedly has a right to rebuke because it's one thing if you're, if if nobody knows who you are and you want to act like an idiot and dance around like, like very feminine or, or very sexualized, whatever, whatever, that's you. But when you have thousands of people following you, now that's a problem. And, uh, so this dude, I mean, I remember a few years ago, he um there was a thing where he was cussing his son out and and you know um i've heard a christian that say hasn't cussed in a long time and maybe something happens and man they're immediately immediately they they it breaks them it breaks their heart they don't even it's weird because they don't even know how to cuss right anymore but when kirk franklin did it uh, he was doing it like that's just the way he talks behind closed doors. It was very, very fluid, very just like nothing. So I've, I've already, you know, seen how he was already for years. And this is why, guys, I, I, it's hard for me to listen to a lot of major Christian artists. It, it really, truly is, you know. And um, and if I like their music, I don't follow their life. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, for sure don't idolize nobody. I mean... So that happens, you know, that's going on. Um, you got this other pastor, Mike Todd. He, that's another one. Uh, I'm just going to get all of this out on one video because I don't like you guys know if you've been watching this stuff, I don't like doing these types of I don't, I don't ever do these types of videos where I call people out. But I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all in one video, get it out of my system. And because um, maybe you wonder what I think, because I never really say anything because I, I just I just don't. Well, Mike Todd's another one. He's another fast-growing church, uh, and it's just uh, the last one I saw. He's on a trampoline. He, he, he <laughs> I don't even know where to start with him. Everything's about fashion. Everything's about money. Everything's about being flashy, flashy cars, flashy. Everything's flashy. And I'm just like, Lord, what's up with all these rock star Christians, Christian leaders, Christian pastors, Christian artists that are just straight rock stars, like, What's up with that? Why is this happening? Why is this happening to the church? You know, and and it all comes down to this verse. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. But wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers 
one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold, and will turn their ears away from the truth, and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions, and will accept the unacceptable. But as for you, be clear-headed in every situation. Stay calm and cool and steady. Endure every hardship without flinching. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill the duties of your ministry. Don't follow this world because there's a God of this world. And if you follow this world, by default, you are falling under the jurisdiction and authority of the God of this world. Do you understand that? You can't do the things of this world and expect to be about the kingdom of God. You could think you are. You could lie to yourself that you are. But you're not. Because the things of this world are under the authority of the God of this world of the kingdom of darkness. Guys, you can't try to make Christianity cool according to the world. It doesn't work. We need to go back to the word of God. We need to humble ourselves. We need to continue to exalt his name. Quit trying to exalt our name or, or anything like that and exalt Jesus. He shares his glory with no one. And, and with these mega church pastors, they're going to learn the hard way, guys. I'm not against mega churches because I truly believe that um, a church can either be completely growing and filled because they're worldly, or they can be completely filled because the word of God is being preached and it's so hard to find a church that really loves the Lord and reads the word that it starts to fill up because it becomes rare. And I think that I, I, I think and I'm hoping and I'm praying that that is what's going to start happening is leaders are going to snap out of it and they're going to start to begin to go back to the Bible, go back to the basics and start to preach about the word of God the way it says it without the gimmicks, without the circus, without the buffoonery. There's no reason to have a sword swallower shirtless on a stripper pole in a church. There's no reason to be a Christian recording artist wearing really tight stuff and tank tops and, and, and dancing seductively for what? There's no reason for a pastor to be on a trampoline or to have these gimmicks or whatever. He, you know, the thing is this, I'm going to finish it off with this. I said this on Sunday service and I'm going to say it right now. Is a mortician is nothing more than a professional makeup artist. They got to be better than the average makeup artist because their job is to make a dead person look alive for their funeral. That's what a mortician is, to make what is dead look alive. You know what some pastors are? Professional morticians. And they're professional at it, at making a church, a dead church, look alive. So anyways, guys, with that, um, I'm going to let you go. But God bless you. Thank you for hearing me out, hear, hearing my heart out. Uh, I don't do these types of videos where I call a lot of these people out, but it is what it is. And I just figure I'd do it all in one video. Uh, but anyways, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, join us for Bible study tonight. Uh, check out the David Rocha channel. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're not. Make sure you subscribe to that channel if you're not. That way you can be notified, get notifications. If you really want to help this channel grow, guys, um, there's a couple things, four things you can do. One is subscribe. The other one is hit, hit, hit like if you like the content. Leave a comment and share. Subscribe, hit like, comment, and share. Those four things will um, 
the, it, it'll lead the algorithm of YouTube to let people to let YouTube know, oh, I better share this with other other people that like this type of content. So that's a, a great way to help us. So anyways, uh, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much. And uh, see you later.